It's a beautiful day on Elliott Bay, but if this fish survey teaches you anything, it's that what you see on the surface doesn't tell the whole tale. This net is about to pull up fish who live near the floor of Puget Sound. Fish who are exposed to contaminants in the sediment. Here's a Pacific herring. These are spawning in Elliott Bay. Jim West and a team with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife have been doing these surveys for nearly 30 years. We got about four or five species of sole in here and we're trying to pick out the ones that are called English sole. Here's a skate. Once the fish are sorted and the rest return to the water, the English sole are put in a holding tank. It represents what's happening on the seafloor in the sediments. A lot of contaminants end up in the sediments. And so we want a species that's living there and feeding in the sediments. But in the sediments, the contaminant loads in Puget Sound are pretty much in the urban areas. So we can find English sole out in the middle of Puget Sound that are really clean, but as soon as you move into a place like Elliott Bay here, they're highly contaminated. West says in seven of 10 survey sites, the contaminants are either not declining or getting worse. Over the course of our lives, the more we eat, the more it accumulates. And whatever, if we eat a fish, we're, we are then in consuming and accumulating what the fish has eaten. And so as you move up the food chain, you get higher and higher concentrations of these bio cumulative contaminants. Senior research scientist Sandy O'Neill calls the fish an indicator species that gives early warning signs of the health of Puget Sound. They're tested for chemicals used decades ago, like PCBs, as well as what are called contaminants of emerging concern, like pharmaceuticals. When you get a prescription, you go to the pharmacist, you know, the first thing the pharmacist does is say, looks at your list of medications and tells you, is it okay to take this medication with that medication? The fish don't have that option. They're just, they're getting exposed to a whole slew of them all at once. The scientists have found compounds that model estrogen are likely causing male fish to produce female egg yolk protein, and that includes salmon, a favorite food for the southern resident orcas. It throws off their hormone balance and it could affect their ability to reproduce. The long-term monitoring data that we produce can be used to document effectiveness of any management actions that are implemented. So we are going to see declines in contaminant levels in herring and juvenile salmonids before we're going to see declines in contaminants in killer whales. So they will be our early warning indicator species that things are getting better or worse. On Elliott Bay, I'm Allison Morrow, King 5 News. Hi, I'm King 5 environmental reporter Allison Morrow. Check out our Saving the Orcas playlist for more videos like this one. Make sure to subscribe to the King 5 channel to get alerts when there's a new video published. What topic do you want us to cover next? Let us know in the comments below.